So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get through what I feel like I'm supposed to this morning. And then we're going to have a time because I really feel strongly that today everybody that wants to be is going to be set free of that unforgiveness. I really believe that this morning. I believe that you can walk out of here, I don't care how many years you've been carrying it, in complete freedom from that unforgiveness. And you've heard it many times. Unforgiveness, you're not, you're not doing anything to them. The only person that unforgiveness hurts is you. That other person, 99% of the time, doesn't even know that you haven't forgiven them. They're living their life. Or maybe it's God. The only person that unforgiveness holds back is you is me when I, when I have it in my heart. See, forgiving, forgiving is the realization of how much we have been forgiven by Christ. This enables me to forgive everything that comes against me or is done to me. It involves not being resentful to others and ignoring the wrongs that we have received so that I can, so other relationships can be healed by how I express his love. See, a lot of times we say forgiveness has parameters. I forgive if they come and apologize. I forgive if they never do that again. (coughs) I'll forgive if they love me in this way. I'll forgive all these parameters that we as people put on it. See, that's not forgiveness. Forgiveness has no parameters. Our Heavenly Father shows us that very clearly in His Word, that there are no boundaries on His forgiveness. And He says we are to model our lives after Jesus Christ. In Luke 23, 34, it says, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And then they divided up His clothes by casting lots. The ultimate forgiveness. As He's hanging on the cross... He's saying, Father, forgive them. Not just those men that just crucified him. He's saying it to all of us, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. The ultimate forgiveness. Forgive everybody, Lord, but not these three or four that are casting lots right here for my clothing. Forgive everybody, God, but that person over there and that one and that one. He said, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. In Ephesians 4.32, it says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Just as Christ was claiming forgiveness from the Father hanging on the cross, he says, be compassionate and kind to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ. Thank you, Andy. In Colossians 3.13, it says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you and me. Over and over he says, this forgiveness is not just for me to you. This forgiveness is to be modeled between you and you and you and you. Man, that's hard. That's hard. I want us to hear a real quick audio, uh, just a part of a uh, of a sermon by Corey Ten Boom. I think it's very powerful because when we look in history, there's very few things that will really uh, just begin to show you the 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 hatred and the evil of this world, like World War II, and what was done to so many people. And so I want you to hear this clip. is Jesus Christ himself and his cross 
shows us that we can accept suffering as a part of God's plan for this world. When I was in a concentration camp, one of the most terrible things I had to go through was that they stripped us of all our clothing and we had to stand. The first time was the worst. I said, Betsy, I cannot bear this. And suddenly it was as if I saw Jesus at the cross. And the Bible tells, they took his garments, he hanged there naked. And I knew he hanged there for me, for my sins. And by my suffering, I understood a fraction of the suffering of Jesus Christ. And it made me so thankful that I could bear my suffering. Love, so amazing, so divine, demands my life, my soul, my all. Some people are afraid to look at the cross. Are you? Don't be afraid. The cross is terrible. It is terrible how Jesus suffered. Not to describe. But you must not be afraid to look at it. For if you had been the only person in the world, Jesus should have suffered for your sins. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my sins rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight, and now I have guidance every day. It was some time ago that I was in Berlin, and there came a man to me and said, Ah, Mr. Bohm, I am glad to see you. Don't you know me? And suddenly I saw that man that was one of the most cruel officers, guards, in the concentrate, in concentration camp. And that man said, I have, I'm now a Christian, I have found the Lord Jesus. I read my Bible and I know that there is forgiveness for all the sins of the whole world, also for my sins. I have forgiveness for the cruelties I have done. But then I have asked God grace for an opportunity that I could ask one of my very victims forgiveness. And Fräulein Tambom wants him here forgiven. Will you forgive me? And I could not. I remembered the suffering of my dying sister through him. But when I saw when I experienced that I could not forgive, suddenly I knew I myself have no forgiveness. Do you know that Jesus has said that? When you do not forgive those who have sinned against you, my heavenly Father will not forgive you your sins. And I, I knew, oh, I'm not ready for Jesus coming because I have no forgiveness for my sins. But I was not able, I could not, I could only hate him. And then I took one of these beautiful texts, one of these boundless resources, Romans 5.5. 5. The love of God is shed abroad into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. And I said, thank you, Jesus, that you have brought into my heart God's love through the Holy Spirit who is given to me. And thank you, Father, that your love is stronger than my hatred and unforgiveness. That same moment, I was free. And I could say, brother, give me your hand, and I shook hands with him. And it was as if I felt God's love stream through my arms. You never touch so the ocean of God's love as that you forgive your enemies. Can you forgive? 
No. I can't either. But he can. When you think of the things that would have happened to her and her sister who died there in the concentration camp, and then to have that opportunity where this man walks in front of you and she begins to recognize him. And what broke her heart was I realized I could not forgive him. All I had was hate. And then she quotes a scripture that many of us, man, it's really hard to hear. Because we talk about the love of the Father so much that sometimes that will glass over our eyes and go, yeah, I don't, I don't think God would really say if he loves me that he wouldn't forgive me. But yet it says different times in the Bible very clearly that if you do not forgive others, then my Heavenly Father will not forgive you. See, the only person that unforgiveness traps is us. Not just in this life, but in eternity with our Father. Unforgiveness will steal everything from you. Everything. In Matthew 18, 21 through 35, and I'm going to read through this pretty quick. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. At those days, servants could go all the way up to the rank of a governor. So don't think when he's saying servant, because when you read this, you go, how can a servant come up with this type of debt? But they could go all the way up to governors in that land. But so this is the king wanting to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold and different things, 10,000 talents, Talents was the largest uh, 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 version of what they could say, like the numeral that they could use for their, money, their currency. So it was the largest thing to measure their currency. 10,000 talents, if you look it up, was equal to, I think it's something crazy, like 60 million wages, a, a day's wages. 60 million. Something that cannot ever be paid back. Okay, so just look at it that way, that it's, it's never, this guy has no chance of ever paying this back. There's no way. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt, even though that won't even come close to paying the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. Canceled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. So basically, we're going from an unpayable debt to if they calculated out, it was about a hundred days of wages instead of 60 million days. A hundred days, all right? So that's the type of the difference. He said, he grabbed him and he began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In his anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your hearts. Well, Michael, I'm never going to run into that type of situation. I've never had a debt worth 60 million days' wages. But think about it. Isn't that what we do? 
we hold bitterness, we hold anger, we hold unforgiveness, and we don't, we don't give that forgiveness. But yet we come into this place and we ask our Father to forgive something that's far, far larger debt, my sin. God, I'm going to hold bitterness towards this person, this unforgiveness towards this person, but Lord, would you please forgive me of my sin? See, this models our relationship with our King. He's saying, I have given you, I have canceled a debt that you could have never, ever, ever paid. Ever. But you're going out and you're choking the guy that owes you this. Through unforgiveness. How many times do we crave forgiveness? but it then is such a struggle to forgive the things that come against me, even the small things or the big things. On the other side, maybe you're sitting here today, like I talked about earlier, and say, you're the one who has been given forgiveness and you're struggling with accepting it. You're trapped by the lies that you did something too wrong, too hurtful, too many times. You don't deserve it, you feel. Why did our Heavenly Father send His Son to die on the cross for you and me if you and I were not valued in our Father's eyes. See, when we we live that way, we're making light of what Jesus did on the cross. We're saying that debt that he paid wasn't big enough for me. In Mark 11, 25... It says, and when, you, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. So he's saying before you come to the altar, before you get in your prayer closet, before you ask me for forgiveness, take account in your life and have you forgiven. Have you truly released and forgiven? Michael, you don't understand how hurt I am or what he did to me or she did to me. You don't understand I was abused for years or this or that or whatever you're walking through. You don't understand, Michael. That doesn't apply to me. See, God, when he shared this story with us and when he gives us these scriptures, he says there are no parameters. There are no buts or ands, or other parts of this story, that, the exceptions to the rule. In Matthew 6, 14 through 15, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you not, do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sins. Don't walk out of here today living under that bondage. That is the word of our Father. That's the word of God saying, I'm not asking you to to come up with this unpayable debt. I'm asking you to forgive as I want to forgive you. I'm asking you that if you want my forgiveness, I'm asking you to do something that you think is undoable, that you think is too much to go through. I'm asking you to do it with me, he says. That as I give my son the most costly sacrifice I could have ever made, I'm asking you to release that unforgiveness. Here's the key. Forgiveness comes with no but if or timelines or backup plans. Forgiveness is complete and only focuses on your side and not on their side. See, forgiveness cannot be only a response determined by their response. You can't forgive one day and then that person does something stupid again and you pick back up that unforgiveness. See, forgiveness is only dealing with your side. It has nothing to do with the other person. Yes, God might use that to do something powerful in their life and heart, but that has nothing to do with you. Your releasing that unforgiveness and forgiving has only to do with us. 
my side of the issue. It cannot come with, I'll forgive only if they do this. That has nothing to do with forgiveness. That is not what he does for you and I. His forgiveness has no boundaries, no parameters, no backup plans, no timelines, no but ifs. See, when I forgive, it doesn't mean that the devil isn't going to try to keep pushing that button. Today, you might release forgiveness, and God might just begin to do an awesome re restoration in your heart and your life. And tomorrow when you get up, the devil, because of who he is, is going to do his best to lie to you and say that that's not real. Or lie to you and say, bring up those thoughts of those different things that he's doing, or that person might do that same thing again. And that's when, when we say these scriptures like, take captive every thought under the dominion of Jesus Christ, that's when it makes all, like that, that we cannot do these things only when it's easy. Forgiveness is a daily thing. Sometimes, man, there are some things in our life that we're going to have to come each day of our life and get up and say, Lord, I choose to forgive today. I will not allow the devil to attack me with that. And as we begin to do that truly, as we begin to, to completely release that day in and day out, you know what the devil does? He finds someone else. Because he realizes that he has lost control over you because you have released that unforgiveness to the Father. And you've chosen not just to make it a Sunday morning deal, you've chosen to make it a lifestyle. And he cannot bind you up with those thoughts anymore because you've taken captive those thoughts under the dominion and power and authority of our King, Jesus Christ. Megan, if you and the team could come. I told you I'd be fast. See, we start believing these lies. We start believing these things that the devil pours against us. A class that we teach uh, throughout the years in different ways at Teen Challenge is that so many times we think we have these rights as human beings. We're taught in society that by our constitution and by all these different things, we have rights. Let me expose us right now. We have zero rights. I don't have a right for you to respect me. I don't have a right for you to treat me a certain way. I don't have a right for my boss to give me a promotion. I don't have the right for any of that. That's stuff that we've been lied to that the devil wants to plant in our minds because that's when unforgiveness is so easy to claim because, man, I have the right for them to treat me this way. They don't have the right. They, and it's all about this justice. This, this, this cannot be the way. And God is saying, listen, when you release unforgiveness this morning, when you come to this altar this morning, I want you to truly and 100% forgive and allow me to be your judge. And allow me to be your attorney. Allow me to be your king. Allow me to worry about you. Forgiveness is not giving up our rights. Forgiveness is giving up our perceived rights, but laying them in God's hands. Forgiveness is not saying what someone else did to you was okay. That's not at all what we're saying. Forgiveness is trusting the one and only fair and just God, judge that we know. Forgiveness does not let them off the hook. That's not what about forgiveness is about. If you come this morning and you say, if I forgive them, then it's me saying what they did was okay. No, it's not. What they did might have been terrible. What you're saying is, is God, I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to be held back. I don't want to be held captive by this bondage any longer. I trust you to be my judge. See, unforgiveness holds us captive. 
It bounds us by lies that we believe. It tells us that we have control if we keep it. It becomes our crutch to live by. It holds us back from real relationships because we close ourselves off to being vulnerable any longer. And because we've been hurt in the past, We won't open up and be vulnerable any longer in relationships, so unforgiveness will rob us of relationship. If you're really struggling in relationship or in your marriage, maybe there's some unforgiveness that God is saying that is binding you up and allowing you to open up and be real in those relationships. Forgiveness will hold us back from real relationship with our Heavenly Father, most important. It eats away at our body and soul, the Bible tells us. It can be a bondage so heavy that it can feel debilitating. It can feel paralyzing. It can eat away at my physical body. It keeps me from being in the right place with my Father because it tells me very clearly in His Word that for me to gain forgiveness, I must forgive. Forgiveness is cutting away chains. Forgiveness is truth spoken from the Father to the lies that I might have been believing for a long, long, long time. Forgiveness gives control to my King so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Forgiveness is healing for wounds that have been left open for years. Forgiveness might mean vulnerability in my life, but it means real relationship in my life. Forgiveness is freedom in our Father who loves us and desires to walk with us under His arms so I don't have to carry the burden any longer. I want us to stand. I want us to turn the lights down a little bit. And I'm challenging you right now, don't rush out those doors. I'm challenging you right now that in this moment, some of you are being spoken to very clearly that you are holding unforgiveness. There's somebody in this room that is walking through, either has walked very clearly through a divorce or in the middle of one. And I'm telling you right now, this word is for you. That if you don't begin to release unforgiveness, it is going to forever tarnish your children and the rest of your family. There's somebody in this room that's been sexually abused and you've lived with it your whole life and maybe nobody else knows and that doesn't matter right now. I'm not here for you to raise your hand and say, yes, that's me. But I'm telling you right now, your father wants to love you and take that burden from you. You know, sometimes the, 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 the hurt that we receive from our mother or father is the worst in our life because that relationship was supposed to model the love of our Heavenly Father. And when our human mothers and fathers fail at that, it cuts really deep. And your Heavenly Father wants to love you like you have not been loved. Your Heavenly Father wants to take that weight. Today is the time. Now. So I'm asking you now, if some of this is you, if any of that's you, and it might have been something I've not even named. I felt very specifically I was supposed to name those things. Come forward now. I'm asking you to step out and to come to this altar now if you want to be able to begin to release unforgiveness. Sometimes it takes a specific action that says, I will not carry this any longer. I am not ashamed, I'm not afraid, because the only thing that's keeping me in that shame, in that shame, in that hurt, is me not doing what I'm asking you to do right now. The one thing that can free you for the rest of your life can happen right now. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with the prayer that I'm going to pray. It has everything to do with that you and I have a perfect Heavenly Father 
that knows everything that has happened to you and desires to bring healing. There's others of you right now that need to come. And you're standing there debating right now. Listen, nobody in this place is going to look down on you because honestly, I think everybody in this place needs to be at this altar right now, including me. Because I guarantee you that there is something in your life that God wants to begin to do right now. There is a weight that God wants to lift off of you. You know what would be great is that none of us have to get on Facebook and rant and rave any longer. We make, we make light of that, but guess what? I read everybody's Facebook accounts and there is a lot of ranting and raving and anger. And even in those small things, God wants to release that right now today. Well, you don't have to get on Facebook to, find, to, to let others know what has happened to you because God will be your judge. So Lord, as we come to your altar right now, God, Lord, I pray that you begin to reveal things to us that we're holding on to. God, I pray that as hard as it is, to release this hurt to you. That God, I pray right now, a power of just release over this place. I pray just, to, just Father, that we begin to let go. We're going to sing a song in just a little bit called Let It Happen. We've sang it before. I know that's going to throw our band off here. But I feel very clearly that we're supposed to do this song. I saw it on Megan's list. And the reason why I love this song, it says, God, basically, I want you to take, it, take me back to the way you created me before these hurts, before these things have happened. God, I want to be in right standing with you. And for me to do that, your word says I have to forgive. Right here in this body, so many times we get caught up there's different disagreements, different personalities. And we hold on to all these different things. And God is saying, if I'm going to be your Lord and Savior, your King, unforgiveness is holding you back. Do you realize that when I gossip about someone, that means I don't have, un that means I have unforgiveness in my heart. Because the only reason I ever gossip about someone is if I'm hurt. You realize that? You realize if I'm not hurt, there's no way I ever gossip about somebody else. Do you hear me? That's a great sign that says the Lord wants to help you in that right now.